Yeah, good to be out there on the grass. Uh, got some good work in today with the guys and now uh, coming off the field and we'll get ready for our virtual meetings. But uh, excited to be out there with the guys. I thought the, uh, the work is, is really good for them. I think there's such a premium on communication. It's one of the things I reminded them just now of all that pre-snap, post-snap communication uh, that they're getting out there and the individual drills and the group drills and with special teams. So I thought it was a really a good day's work. And with that, I'll take any questions. Thank you very much, Coach. The first one will go to Tony Grossi. Hi, Kevin. Um, could you explain what modifications you've made in your OTA program to get veterans in? And what is the status of the mini camp? Will that go on as scheduled? Yeah, mini camp will go on as scheduled, Tony. Uh, we just, we have our program here uh, with, with what we're doing each day on, on these OTAs. And, and uh, it, it's really, we're, we're just going to adapt and pivot as necessary based on the guys we have available to us. Uh, and that's something that, that we do every day. So we see who's out there, what drills we feel like we can, we can run. Uh, it's no different than when you're uh, in a game. You got to be ready to adapt and pivot. So that's what we're doing. So that's nothing new to us. And this week, it looks like it's defensive heavy. Will it be offensive heavy next week with veterans, more offensive veterans? Uh, you know, Tony, I'll stay in the moment here. And, and truth be told, uh, you know, I've said this before. My play, the players have heard me say it. This is a voluntary program, and the guys who choose to show up will get coached here, and, and that's under the, their own volition. So I know that's that's certainly a story uh, that's being written about. But for us, we deal with it very matter-of-factly, and it's a voluntary program. And the guys that are here will get coached up, and the guys that uh, aren't here, we'll, we'll see them for mandatory minicamp. Thank you, Tony. Mary Kay Cabot is next. Uh, yeah, just uh, wondering, Coach, about Anthony Schwartz just kind of working off to the side a little bit and noticed that he had the, the leg sleeve on. H how's Anthony doing? What's what's going on with him? Yeah, he's fine, Mary Kay. I think, you know, in the off season, you get a lot of little nicks and guys work through things. They're out for a day. They're back in there. Some guys are sick and, and out for a day. So that's the normal course of the off season. And then just real quick, um, how cool was it, though, even though I, I know it's voluntary, but for Miles and Denzel, your two biggest name guys on defense to sort of be here, maybe welcome some of the new guys and perhaps set the tone. America, I think it's great to see any of the guys that are here. Hard for me to single those two out. Uh, we're excited for the guys that come in and work. And uh, that's that's what it's about. And they're doing a nice job with it. But um, again, a voluntary program. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Mary Kay. Daryl Ryder, go ahead. Hey, Coach, just, just kind of curious with the, the limited practice and the limited amount of players out there, just from your perspective, um, you know, what do you glean from the work that you're going through on the field? And then when you go back into your office and you're watching the practice film and stuff like that, what are you looking for? What do you take away from it? Yeah, Daryl, I think it's been outstanding. I think the what we're focusing on right now is teaching. We are teaching and the pace doesn't have to be full speed. I think the amount of coaching uh, and learning that's getting done out there has been outstanding. Uh, so we really value the work you can get done in a walkthrough, the work you can get done in these individual periods. And then these virtual meetings uh, are a huge component to this. So I see great strides being made uh, just from guys getting some really uh, close attention uh, with the coaches. And the, the sports world's kind of returning uh, to some semblance of normalcy out there. Fans are coming back in the stands. The NFL obviously expecting uh, full houses this year. Just uh, from your perspective as a coach, though, uh, are you getting the sense from the league that this year's training camp is going to reflect more of a, a normal training camp now? Or are you expecting that there's going to still be protocols and restrictions that you're going to have to work through as a team? Yeah, Daryl, I'm hopeful, but I really don't know uh, that far out. Uh, but I'm hopeful, obviously, to have our fans out here, have our fans in the building. Uh, that's something that I know myself and our players are looking forward to. Thank you. Thank you, Daryl. Jeff Shadell has our next question. You are from a year ago when you – at this time, you hadn't even met most of your players. Yeah, if I missed the first part of that question, if you don't mind repeating it. I 
just asking you to can you quantify how far ahead you are uh, from a year ago when at this time you hadn't even met most of your players? I don't think I could quantify it, um, but I'll tell you this, the experience of being around the rookie class as much as we have been, uh, I just, again, see great value in that, uh, getting a lot of really good instruction with the coaches. So uh, just speaking to this year, uh, yeah, I think it's always good when you can be around your players. Thanks, Jeff. Aditi King Kawala, you're up. Hi. Um, the understanding that this is fully voluntary, are there any players that are not on the field that are still logging into the virtual meetings? And if so, can you tell us who they are? You know, Aditi, I'm not going to report who's here, who's not here, who's on the call, but uh, I will tell you that, that we have very good uh, attendance on those virtual meetings. Okay, and then if I could ask another one, you obviously have a lot of new defensive players and you're talking about communication right now. So the process right now, is it just figuring out how guys communicate or are you actually assessing how some of these newer guys play, what their skill sets may be, what you are going to eventually formulate for them? Well, I think it's all of the above. Anytime you are with your players, you're, you're assessing them uh, while you're teaching. But we're, we're in the infancy and, and we're breaking the huddle and, and we're making the calls based on the formation, making the calls based on a motion and a shift. So that's where you really have to start. And that's where we're starting right now. But in terms of assessment, I mean, I tell the players they're, they're being evaluated every day. We evaluate how they are, how they do in meetings. We evaluate how uh, responsible they are on the field, their assignments, et cetera. So uh, never, never going to miss an opportunity to, to get better uh, as a team. And that's what we're certainly trying to do. Thanks, Aditi. Scott Patrick is next. Hey, Kevin, you mentioned a little bit, but just how important are the virtual meetings, especially given that um, there's a good chunk of the offensive guys not at the OTA so far? Yeah, I think we found out, Scott, last year that, that you can cover ground in, in those virtual meetings. So we're continuing to do so. We're, uh, we're getting close to wrapping up our installation uh, for, for this spring, if you will. So we're still covering a lot of ground. Um, you know, uh, all of us have learned uh, to, to get better at Zoom and we're still trying different ways to get better, but it's, it's a component of, uh, of life from last year that, that I think a lot of people in different industries are, are continuing to do. Thanks. Thanks, Scott. Zach Jackson, go ahead. Zach, if you could hit unmute. You hear me now? Yes, sir. Okay. Kevin, question about uh, rookies in general, but James Hudson in particular. Do you believe in teaching guys one position to get them up to speed the most, or do you think these guys are ready to kind of take on multiple things, you know, for whatever they might be called upon when September rolls around? Zach, I think it depends on the player. Uh, you, you know, if, if a guy can handle it, I, I think the more jobs you can teach them, the better chance they have to help your football team early. Uh, having said that, uh, you know, you don't want to overburden a young player. So we, we really deal with a case by case basis, see what the guy's uh, capable of handling. Um, but versatility is key. And you guys know that once you get to game day and, and who's up, who's down, you need people that can do multiple jobs. So any rookie that can take on multiple jobs, obviously, that, that's a big deal. Thank you. Thanks, Zach. Nate or we'll go to you. Kind of Miles Garrett, you know, the guy you, you gave the uh, captain honor to on defense uh, late last season in the playoffs. Do you view him kind of leading the way in, into these voluntary OTAs as, as a sign of leadership uh, on the, you know, for the other defensive players, especially so many new faces here? And then I wouldn't specifically say, you know, leading the way in the OTAs. It's no secret Miles is a, a leader of this football team, a leader of the defense. So, uh, to see him out there with his teammates and, and going through the drills and, and that type of thing is, is great. But Miles leads in his own way. Uh, I think he does a great job on and off the field. And Kevin, I just wanted to ask you real quick about another guy uh, who's there, um, but one of the new guys, Anthony Walker. What do you, what stands out right now um, just from the, you know, him at, at the Mike linebacker spot from, from a, a learning standpoint, communication standpoint is, is he a guy who's kind of 
you know, come in as advertised in, in, in those types of ways. Yeah, Nate, I'm glad you asked about him. I would say as advertised, you know, you're playing that Mike linebacker position, you're directing traffic, you're getting everybody lined up, you in a lot of ways are the quarterback of the defense. And to see him communicate, to see his leadership uh, on display uh, in these type of settings is very impressive. And I think he's the type of guy that, that uh, you know, we think embodies the, the type of, of, uh, of style of play, uh, the type of uh, person we want in that locker room. Thanks, Nate. We'll go to Jake Trotter. Yeah, hey, Kevin. Uh, you know, Felton was, I guess, officially a running back at UCLA. You guys had him largely with the receivers today. I mean, you see that kind of going back and forth for him through training camp. And then just what kind of value does his versatility bring to your your offense and, and potentially to special teams as well? Yeah, I would tell you, it's really it's back to the question before about uh, Hudson. Yeah, versatility is a big deal. Uh, Dimitri played running back and wide receiver previously in college. Uh, he, he's done both with us already. He's been in both meetings. Uh, there's been times where he's a running back for that day and, and a wide receiver the next day. So it does speak to his versatility. It speaks to his ability to mentally handle that. Um, and versatility is a big deal, like we mentioned. When you look at the, uh, the, the, the running back battle behind, you know, your two main guys, Kareem and, and Nick, um, you know, Dearness was there today. You had a good year for you last season. Um, you know, is that a situation because of Felton's versatility where, you know, both guys might potentially, uh, you know, have a shot or, um, you know, they could be pushing one another? Uh, you know, what do you see out of that dynamic at this point? Yeah, Jake, I'd say it's, it's way, way early for those type of conversations. Now, the conversation about competing, I mean, that, that takes place every day at every position. So uh, we'll let that uh, be determined over the course of the next months. Uh, but to say that guys are competing, that, that's no secret. That's what they're uh, in this business for. Thanks, Jake. To Tom Withers. Thanks, Rob. Hey, Kevin, sorry, I was a, a tad late here. Are you expecting more veterans next week for this? Yeah, I, I, we'll see, Tom. Um, again, we're not, we're, uh, can I say it's voluntary one more time? <laughs> we'll see the guys that are here. We'll coach them up, but we're not uh, taking attendance every day and saying who's here, who's not here. Uh, we, we know that there's three OTAs this week, four next week, and then a mandatory mini camp. So uh, we'll, we'll see it and we'll adapt to who's here. Gotcha. Hey, and it looks like Miles has been working on his Euro step a little bit in the off season. Are, uh, are you cool with that? Are you okay with him playing basketball? He retired. So congratulations oh, on a great career for Miles. Really proud of him, uh, but uh, he's done. Did you have to have that talk with him, Kevin? He's retired. I'll look for Thank the banner, uh, the jersey to be hung some someday soon. Thanks, Tom. We're going to take three more. Tony Grossi, Mary Kay, Scott, Tony. All right, Kevin, coaches are naturally always worried, concerned about competitive advantages or disadvantage versus their opponents. When you see 70 or read about Kansas City Chiefs having 70 in attendance and Ben being in Pittsburgh and the Colts having a big attendance, do you naturally have concern that your team is falling behind? Tony, I tell you, I'm concerned about the Cleveland Browns uh, every day. That's, I, I worry about us. Uh, I know the, what we had to accomplish today. I know the work that had to be put in today, and that's what I focused on. But uh, that, that's really what I'm, concerns me is the Cleveland Browns. And uh, Malik McDowell, even though he looked like he was on the side today, do you guys view him as an end or a tackle? Good question. Uh, I think he uh, will see what he can handle. I think he's doing a great job. Uh, really pleased with, with how he's attacking uh, things in, in the weight room, in the meeting room, uh, out on the field. So we'll see what, uh, what that role uh, pertains, but he, he certainly can do both. All right. Thank you. Thanks, Tony. Mary Kay Cabot, go ahead. Yeah, Coach, just wondering, uh, you kind of gave everyone marching orders at the end of last year to go forth and come back with something different, better, new, uh, just, you know, not stay in the same place. So just wondering, uh, can you share with us maybe what you did to add to your repertoire or your game this offseason, anything of note? Yeah, Mary Kay, I think it was really important uh, that we – as a staff, as uh, players, as coaches, we all made sure that we worked on our craft. 
And I think you could talk to our players that we're very specific about what those things are. Uh, working with the coaches, uh, you know how I feel about this coaching staff. Uh, it's a staff that pushes each other um, and we have to be better. Uh, I'm not going to get into specifics, Mary Kay, but I'll tell you that, that we took it very seriously in, in terms of trying to find ways that we can adapt and, and become better coaches. Uh, it's, it's, that, that's something that we're going to focus on every single year is not just to get, to be stale and, and stay the same. We want to continue to get better, uh, at, in an individual uh, way. And that should help in the collective way as well. Okay. Thank you. Thanks Mary Kay. Final question for coach goes to Scott Petrick. Hey, Kevin, were there discussions with JC and maybe some of the other guys about changing the schedule of the off season, or did you just figure I'll keep it the same. And if the players show up, they show up. Scott, I had a lot of conversations with many players. Uh, I'll leave them private, um, but I think you guys know how I feel uh, about our players. It's, this is a voluntary program, uh, and, and we mean that. And if they choose to come here, we want to make sure it's a, a safe place uh, for them to get instruction from their coaches. But beyond that, uh, really, there's there's nothing else to add. Does it feel tricky at all because JC is the president of the NFLPA and has been so vocal about this issue? No, uh, I understand the dynamic uh, completely.